We call Mr. Muhammad a heat teacher. Because he eats your heat, dope, and alcohol. They call Mr. Muhammad a black supremacist. Because he teaches you and me not only that we're as good as the white man, but better than the white man. <laughs> yeah, better than the white man. You are better than the white man. And that's not saying anything. That's not saying you know, you know where I'm supposed to be equal with him. Who is he to be equal with? You look at his skin. You can't compare your skin with his skin. Why your skin look like gold beside his skin. All right, all right, all right. Glow rising all. We are about to get started with a very special, a very special event today. Uh, you know, let this has been a great moment that has been developing over the past couple of days. I thank everyone for being involved. This book has really caused so much discussion that I think that it's only right that we continue to elevate the conversation in regards to the three steps to end racism right now. If you have not popped your copy, please check the description. It is a live link. It has already, uh, there has been some efforts to take this link from being publicized. So again, people, this conversation is moving it is moving to in areas that we never saw that we we didn't even think they were going to be moving to so make sure you download your free copy for three steps to end racism right now it is literally the buzz in social media and conscious and woke as well as in academia now is moving through with getting requests for this manuscript and this is the premise of the conversation this morning. So again, I want to thank everyone for being here, being on board, being ready. And without any further ado, we want to in, we want to continue to elevate the conversation, but with not only elevating the conversation, but with peppering with the activism and the advocacy in creating the world that we want to exist in. Without any further ado, I want to welcome to the platform both author and activist and advocate for Black supremacy, Brother Palmetto Starr. You can also call him Prophet Robet, as well as, of course, someone that is, you all are familiar has had uh, some some time on the panel before as well uh, from Exodus, Mississippi. We want to welcome Angel Snuffsnap, and we are going to get started with this very timely and very important conversation today. Welcome. We're going to add brother to the screen, and just want to say thank you all again for being here with us to weigh in on this heavy heavy conversation. And we see everyone in the room. Thank you so much for being a part. We see Brother Neophyte. We see Tanjan Zhu. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Grand Rising and good morning there. Well, in greeting of culture, I want to say Black supremacy to everybody that's uh, listening and everybody that will be listening to this. And uh, Black supremacy, Brother Snoop Snoop, see you out here. And I appreciate everything that um, that you that you have said and that you have done. And uh, I just wanted to, when I saw the book review, I hit Courtney up because I just wanted to, there's a couple things I wanted to address. Well, first, let's just take on the most obvious thing. There is no possible way uh, that even though the book is written to be read in one sitting, 
is written to be read in one setting. It's pages is written to be read in one setting because the answer and the solution to racism is simple and clear. And I don't want to convolute the, the issue by make it that by putting a lot of unnecessary stuff on there. So I did make the make the book very concise and easy to read on all reading levels. However, it is painfully obvious that you didn't read past page 14 of the book. And that was obvious by what you were saying in your book review, because you had said that we had just created a world with just black and pink people. And that is not the case because I address every nationality, I address every ethnicity in the book. I, I you know, because it's important to do so. As a matter of fact, um, you know, it, at page 15, I go into the racial um, assignment for non-Indigenous people, you know, um, and non-Indigenous includes Asians, um, white Hispanics, um, all those people, Arabs. All of those people, I, I address that specifically in my book. So, in fact, I'll, I'll say, um, I'll read this to you. This is actually on page... 15, so there's no possible way you could have read past page 14, because on page 15, I address non-Indigenous, and where I say, we must acknowledge the role that non-Indigenous have played in racism. If you are not melanated, and your hair does not curl or have the potential to curl toward the sun, you are not the Indigenous native being of whatever land you are in, including and especially what is currently considered the Americas. Miscegenation has been a tool wielded violently in places like Brazil in order to reset the balance and end racism now. People that were once white, Hispanic, Asian, are considered themselves any subset of eth ethnic Latino, Arab, non-Black Egyptians, or any non-Black, non-African, are now non-Indigenous. With free eyes, we see that the land is not your birthright. You have lost the truth about your origin. In your land, only the oldest stones alone tell no lie. Your fathers will be left in the old world for the whispered wars against black divine beings. Commit now to your most proper place. Be the balance or be the ashes. We will end racism. This is the new world free of empty egos of death and stolen culture. This is why invaders and, and invader allies are non-indigenous. So I did specifically address every ethnic group aside from black and pink people. Of course, I talk about them black and pink most extensively because that's where the dynamic of racism actually is and comes from, is from that dynamic of, of um of black and pink people. So, you know, I, I definitely wanted to address that. And um, and I saw on your review, it just seemed like you colored it a lot with your own experiences. You know, you colored it a lot with your own experience with men and with religion and with the, with the you know, experiences that you had. So, you know, aside from you not reading the book, you know, which was painfully obvious that you didn't read past page 14 and you may have, you know, looked and saw and, um, you know, went through to critique different things. You definitely didn't read the, the definition of black supremacy. Um, but aside from that, what I saw was a pain black being. A black being that needs healing. 
And what black supremacy is about is about healing our black brothers, is about healing our black nation, is about healing uh, our black men. So that's that. So that's why I insisted on on talking to you as soon as possible with Courtney, not for the mere fact you didn't read the book. That I mean, you didn't read the book, and and you made a book, and you and you said you made a it was a review of a book, but you didn't read it. But that's beside the point. I saw a hurt human being. I saw a hurt black man that was coloring his experiences onto the new world, you know, that was you, that was trying to take this, his experiences with men and with religion and with, uh, you know, different sorts of things and make it into, uh, you know, something that, that was that. And it's not, it's not about your experience. Uh, and I, you know, that trauma is real. You could definitely see it inside of you, you know, and, and it, it it colored your perception of what the what how beneficial this book could have been to you. You know, if you really read it for all 30 pages of the book and sat down and read it, you would see how beneficial this book would be to a, a, a dark melanated being such as yourself. You know, I see that you, you know, you, I, we come into the panel and I think, you know, I may look like a relative of yours. You're out there in Mississippi. You may be kin of mine, you know, and maybe, uh, you know, that conjures up feelings of hurt. You know, I may look like your grandfather. I don't know, but I mean, um, just, just the fact that you use that to, you know, in, instead of actually talking about the book and actually talking about what we're talking about in the book, I mean, is is um to me, I I thought it was um very misleading to call it a book review when you when you weren't really talking about the book and you, you know you um you know you you skipped over you didn't you obviously didn't read past page fifteen and it's a beneficial book especially for black people especially for dark melanated beings such as yourself you know so you, know, you use the tool that could have been helping you and then you turned it to something that was it that was not was even written in the book you know what not a lot of the stuff that you were saying wasn't written in the, in the book so you know I, I just wanted to address that and you know let you know that i am here to show you our black supremacy culture which is to heal our black people it's not here to hurt or to hinder or to harm any black person, you know, but we're here to help and to aid and to and to and to be guides to our black people, you know. And there's nothing wrong with being great. I, you know, I, I see that you and the lady, the sister noble, you had a problem with being great and you had a problem with being black and you had a problem with you know, people that strove for greatness, all greatness is essentially is you saying, doing exactly what you say you're going to do. All greatness is essentially is that you keeping your word. You know, now there's different degrees of that, but that in its essence, all greatness is, is you being able to keep your word and being and doing exactly what you say you're going to do. You know, so there's we we should we should strive to be truthful. We should strive for greatness as black people. And as you heard at the beginning of the clip, you know, you made the point that I said Malcolm X said he was a black supremacist, and I did play at the beginning of this clip where he does talk about being supreme and how black people are supreme and how black people and that he was taught lessons of black supremacy by Elijah Muhammad. So, you know, uh, yes, he was a Muslim, but he was a black supremacist as well, and admittedly so. So, I mean, to, to you know, I, 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 I get what you're saying, and I, and I definitely appreciate you. That's why I wanted to get on this panel, because I saw a hurt black man, and I, and I wanted 
to heal. I didn't want to come in here in, a, in the spirit of bashing you because you obviously didn't read the book. You know, I, I wanted to come in here into in a in a space of healing, you know. And then, you know, these people, your deacons are, you know, I think a lot of times black people confuse entertainment with leadership. No, they could they they um they can entertainment and entertainers with leaders and you know if you look at the black the back panel of the book uh you know if you read past page 15 or actually went to page 30 and read my experiences where i have um led a community of off the grid people off the grid black people with free food clothing and shelter I have been instrumental in um, in gang truces all across South Carolina and Georgia, with Bloods, Crips, GDs, all of that. You know, so I, I I reach out to the youth, and I and I'm and that's my thing is to heal. You know, it's not to hurt. You know, not to hinder. Even if people think that they're hurting me, you're really hurting yourself. You know, you there's no way you could criticize me and not hurt yourself as well because uh you know they call I, now prophet of black supremacy was not a self claimed moniker this was actually given to me by fellow premise so you know it's not something that i just claim myself you know it's not something it's not this is not something that i i claimed as as you know me i was having visions i was telling people about these visions and I, you know, I was proclaimed the prophet of black supremacy by a fellow black supremacist. And I took it, yeah, I took it and I said, yes, I stepped into the role, you know? So I, I don't, I, to, I, it's not something that I claim. This is not, this is not a, this is not a name that I just put out there to, you know, to, to make myself feel good. And self and self aggrandizement. This is not a self aggrandizement thing, uh, you know. In fact, they call me prophet for a reason, and I want to read. Um, and when you said that, when you went went into, you know, what you were saying about the uh, um, about what your thoughts of the book were, because it wasn't about really the book, because you didn't read the book, but. I was just saying that, you know, that we had to realize and understand exactly where we're coming from, you know, and we have to use the right language. There's no way that black people can be racist. And you kept on putting this label of racism against me. Even if black people were to go back and enslave and hang and lynch and do all the every last single thing that pink people have done to us it will be justice it wouldn't be racist racism is what was used against us that's like somebody stealing your car and then you hit them in the head to get your car back that's that's not race that's not that's not you know that's not you acting violently towards that person that's you retrieving your your birthright and that's what what and even if we were to do that that would be just us retrieving our birthright it wouldn't be racism so to say that you know i'm in the same mindset as these racists is you know is absolutely foolhardy uh, at the least and you know very dangerous at the at the most because you know then it starts to open up the door for pink power terrorists to try to put us on the same in the same boat as a lot of these other people, and it's and that's not the, and that's not true because we there's no way that black people can be racist even if we were to do the same thing that that um that they have that was done to us. So you know it's about it's about stepping up, and we can't be afraid of our people that step up. So we are stepping up. Black supremacy is stepping up the plate. You know, it's not about is is not about um living in a fantasy land. 
Um, now you now you said that the the world that I had portrayed, the world that I put out, was a fantasy. That that the black um, that the Badlands and um, Black Town and things of that nature. But these were actually based on models that I had lived. You know, Black Town is a, is based on a real model of our off the grid community where we assumed a neighborhood, we took over a neighbor, neighborhood and provided people with free food, clothing and shelter. You know, so it is based on a reality. It's not based on it's not based on fiction. These are things I wrote this down because of my experiences in Blacktown and actually seeing free black people. You said that you got you you want to see black people in their in their natural state. Our natural state is freedom, and most black people have not ever been free ever in their life. So you know we had to we had we are coming from a place where we need where we had to see black people free in order to write about it. So I am the only one that with that ability in in our collective of black supremacy to be able to write something like this. You know, people have different roles, but I, you know, in our collective, I am the only one that's able to write this these experiences down and put them down like this, you know? So, and then you talk about fasting. You say that, you know, admittedly you haven't fasted past um, five days and you know, it, it seemed like you know you so to you can't speak on somebody that has um, fasted for eight hundred and one days without eating any solid food and has witnesses to verify that as well. Witnesses that were that are in your comment section right now, you know. So, you know, so to you can't you can't say that um, you know you got you can't you can't you're coming from a place where you know you don't know, and I'm inviting you to come to that place of freedom. I'm inviting you to come to that place of healing. I'm inviting you to shed your past traumas and to join us to be supreme beings, you know? So that that's my thing is I saw a hurt black man and you know, they say hurt, black, they say hurt people, hurt people, but there's no way you could hurt me. You're just hurting yourself if you're not reading the whole book. And talking about you reviewing the book, so that that's basically you know what, what I wanted to say, and you know just it is and just and just address you because I did want to, I did want I do come from a place where I see the pain, I want to heal, I'm not coming from a place of you know, people are gonna say whatever about the book, you know I've been mentioned on CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, not because they like my content, <laughs> you know they hate my content. You know, I've been deplatformed before deplatforming was a thing. Not because they love my content, not because because my content went against the status quo. So I'm used to controversy. I'm used to people not liking what I got to say. You know, but my thing is when it's a black person with the potential, such as yourself, because you don't see yourself as great, but I do. I see the greatness in you. And you can be great. It just join us and walk in the path. So that's that's all I'm saying. And you talking about is um is walking religious? Is walking religious? If you're going it, like it, that's to me, it's like supremacy to a religious path because people are walking it. It's like equating somebody walking to the store to to. To Catholic, you know, to a Catholic religion or something like that. It's just it doesn't make any sense to me because it's a path. It's a way. It's a way that we walk. You know, it's a path. It's not any sort of dogmatic, dogmatic thing. You know, it's not anything like that. And um, I do want to address the thing, even though I didn't address it in the book. I didn't address the women in the book, and Sister Noble definitely didn't read the book. And, you know, she admitted that, I'm, I'm, you know, she definitely did that. I do, I do want to address her because anybody that is willing and able to step up is, will, you know, will have the power to do so. You know, that's, that's, that's gender, 
that's regardless of your gender. You know, it's about your willingness and ability first and foremost. You know, are you willing to step up? Are you able to step up? So your willingness and ability is, is that, you know? So that's that's my thing. And I, I you know, I, I just, I, I really wish you healing, you know, more than anything. You know, despite the fact that you didn't read the book and, and said that and called it a review, you know, but I wish you healing. I don't, I, I, nothing, nothing less than that. You know, at the very least heal. At the very most, uh, at the very most, you know, acknowledge your supreme self and step into that and step into that because you are a supreme being. That's why people are here watching you right now. You have a, you have a level of magnetism that you are not even acknowledging, you know? And you want to live and die like the chicken that you ate. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want that? We are not beasts in the field. And we are made, we are, we are, we are different. We are special. Every snowflake that falls from the sky is different. Every snowflake that has fell and fallen from the sky since the beginning of time has a different design because they're special. So that, that's basically what I wanted to say with, in regards to you and the book and your review of the book. So I, I wanted to definitely address that, you know, be, you know, um, and that's why I told Courtney to, to set up the meeting as soon as possible. So my question is, do you want to heal or do you want to hurt yourself? Cause, uh, cause it was coming, cause you're coming from a place of really, of just it seemed like self hatred. Sister Noble was talking about she doesn't see anything good for people. I mean, just I mean, just I mean, I mean just this self defeating and very self destructive sort of mentality. And my my thing is that we we don't have to we don't have to engage in that. We don't have to be like that. We could we are we are something different we are something that is that are we you are worthy you are worthy you know and sister noble is worthy too so but it didn't but you guys weren't coming from a place of worthiness you know i was just you know i was taken aback really by by the what seemed like a lot of self-hatred you know so that's that's what i was saying in the review because I didn't see the review. I didn't see the review part. <laughs> I, I saw the other part, you know. But I know I, I don't know if I look like one of your kin or something. Well, you you got you got family. You got the same place that a lot of my family's from. And I don't know if that's that has anything to do with your assessment or um, so-called review of what of what I'm doing and. Um, but you know, like I said, they, you let's step into the place of healing and stop, step and, and get out of the place of hurt. I mean, I, so my question is, did you read past page fourteen? Honestly, I mean, honestly, did you read past page fourteen? I mean, just straight through. Just like, did you read past that page? Because I, I, I addressed non-indigenous a couple times in the book. So, I mean, to say that I didn't address Chinese and Arabs and all these other people, I mean, that's that's definitely, you definitely didn't read the whole thing. That I, so that's my question to you. Like, can you honestly say that you read past page 14 in the book straight through? Because it seemed like you read to page 14 and then you were like picking different things and writing it down and looking at things that you disagreed with and writing it down, you know, and then speaking on it, you know, and then talking about other people that are not involved in the book, you know, um, you talked about a lot of people that ascribe that are in the same culture as us, but they, but they, they had nothing to do with this book whatsoever. So, um, you know, you know, you, I, I heard that. I heard a lot of that, you know. And then you got to talk about Sarnetter 
And I've been on Sawnetter's platform, but I don't know any, I don't know any black leaders that have come from that platform. I know a lot of debaters. I know a lot of content creators and, uh, you know, different people like that, that have, that, that have come from that platform. But, you know, um, as far as being a, being a leader, that's a whole different thing. You know, I'm not an entertainer. I'm not here to, I'm not here to shuck and jive and, and be an entertaining person to you. I'm here to present you with a new world. You could choose to walk to it or walk with me to it or not. You know, I'm not here to shuck and drive and, you know what I'm saying, do all that. I'm not, that's not me, you know. But I, just, I wanted to know, I want to know, because you're not saying anything. So, I mean, like, where did you really read to in the book? Okay. I was waiting for Sister Courtney to pass the mic to me or how are we going to, is this just, this is conversations just between you and I, how's this working here? Yes, um, we are, this is a conversation, I'm just offering it on my platform. Okay. But this is a conversation, a dialogue that I want to share with uh with with subscribers and share with uh the 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 youtube universe so to speak but this is a conversation that that literally i'm just you know i'm i'm here you know but uh i want i want this dialogue this this intellectual exchange to be elevated and heightened between you two specifically okay well i just wanted to make sure uh <clears throat> Brother Palmetto said that, you know, said everything that he wanted to say. I didn't want to interrupt his uh, flow. And I didn't want the people in the chat room and those who are listening. Oh, yes, please. Uh, think no, that I was, uh, you know, I didn't want to up upset his flow. And his question to me. Oh, no, you was, can go ahead and uh, it's, a, it's a response. Okay. Yeah. This is well, first of all, I, I want to, 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 to counter and to have an exchange. Definitely. Okay. All right. Well, first of all, I want to thank you once again for uh, inviting me here to your platform and uh, for this brother to um, also welcome me into his home, uh, especially one of whom he does not like uh, the review or the words that I had to say about his writings. And of course, whether it's my writing or my belief, I say that uh, the, there's nothing, nobody is beyond critique, whether it's you or me or the ancestors or anybody. Everybody can be critiqued. And whether you like it or not, that's your personal problem. Of course, we would love for people to like My what thing we is that do. You, didn't. Okay. you know, of course, we would like for people to enjoy what we do, what we say. Mm -hmm. That's not always the case. And me personally, uh, I never get upset about anything that people say about me. I, I don't care. I, I really don't. Uh, you have the right to your opinion. And you can, uh, my thing is when uh, you interpret or say things that I did not say, and I understand why you might get upset over those things when people take your words out of context. And uh, sometimes we say things or whatever, and uh, we need to probably more clarify things more so people can understand. But I mean, when it's all said and done, those who can see your vision, they see those who can't see your vision, they won't. That's just how it, that's how it is. That's how it goes. That's, that's what I have to deal with day in and day out. So I know you have to, you going through the same thing. And I know Brother King Noble, um, like I told you, myself and Brother King Noble, we basically for years have been partners and we never agree on everything, but we partners in this struggle. And I'm not going to let nobody say nothing bad about him. I know he's not going to let nobody say nothing bad about me. We know we partners in the struggle. 
and we know where we need to go. So, like I told you, Brother King Noah's the only one on this platform since I've been on social media, been a brother to me, black supremacy. So it's not like I have something against black supremacy like that. In ideology, I have a disagreement, but as far as the brotherhood, Brother King Noah and black supremacy have treated me the best on this platform. So I cannot, there's no way that I can, you think that I have some kind of uh, uh, hatred or dislike for black supremacy when black supremacy is my only brother on social media. I don't have no brotherhood with no Hebrew Israelites. I have no brotherhood with comedic folks. I have no brother, no brotherhood with none of these people. The only one I ever had a relationship, a good relationship with, and I could be me. I could say whatever I want to say, Brother King Noble, like, that's you. You know, I understand, you know. But these other people, oh, you, you a coon, you a sambo, and you this and that and that and that. Because you don't like my opinion, because you don't like uh, my critique of what you have to say. Even by bi uh, even biological. I don't get along with my brothers and sisters. We have differences. But that's my biological brother. My, that's my biological sister. And we throw down together. We care about each other when 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 it's all said and done. And that's the way we should be here. You should not expect nobody to agree. I don't expect nobody to agree with me 100 percent And I and we all on different levels. So Maybe your wisdom is higher than mine. I'm on kindergarten level. Don't it, how, so how can you expect a kindergartner to understand what you're talking about when you're so high out there in the stars? But I want to say this in response to our brother here. And he says, you didn't read the book. You didn't, you didn't. No, I, I can tell. I can tell you didn't, you didn't read no book. I, I, I know you didn't read the book. So what page does the, where we talk about the Badlands, what page is that? Because I don't have that in front of me. Um, when I talk about the Badlands? When you talk about the Badlands and uh, Blacktown. Page, um, I'm just curious. Reassignments and relocation. That is... Page. Is it past? Is it past okay, page that's 40? page twenty? That's page twenty. It's, pa it's okay, page so, twenty one actually. Past, okay, page twenty one. So if I didn't read the book, how would I know about the the Badlands and Blacktown? If I didn't get past well, page it, fourteen. There's also. Also, at the at the end of the book, there is a um, can I can I can I just speak? what I call right language? Yeah, I understand. And I, and I break can down. I can I, can I speak? Know, I break can down I, all of that badlands? Yeah, I know. I know about the definitions in the back. Yeah, I know because I, I read the book. Yeah, it's the right language. I read the book from number I mean, one. How did you not know? How did you not know I addressed non-indigenous? You said you said I didn't address. I didn't know I didn't the Asians, I did not Mexican, that kids, all that other stuff. Your concentration was on just black folks. And you just said it in your in your earlier talk. You said you basically addressed pink people and black folks. That's all I was saying. And there you don't make a specific, there's nothing specific like the black town is for black folks, the badlands for pink people. There were you don't make specific, okay. Well, there's Chinese town for the oh, Chinese okay. folk, and there's what you call it is you know. See, you didn't you didn't go into detail with what's going to be happening in Mexico town well, with let, the Mexican let, let, okay. You didn't go into detail, but I read the book. Okay, well let me let me say this because I I, I, I I did say I was, the middle ground, you, man, I, the middle uh, ground, which is the the buffer zone well, between Black I, Town I, and, and the Badlands. Is actually yeah. where the Mexicans and the pink and the um, non Arabs, I mean the Arabs okay. and the non Black people, non Indigenous people are. I did, I did state that specifically in the book. Yeah. So I. Did yeah, you did. But I'm just saying. Uh, all I'm saying was basically uh, concentrated on pink people and Black folks 
where they actually have a place that's named Blacktown and the Badland. Everybody else don't have this. It's not, it's not. Well, that, you don't it's have, called the middle ground. You don't it's have a the town the for ground. the name of lands for these specific type persons. That's all I'm saying. So let me just address some of the well, things that you're saying. Because it's not about, uh, well, actually it is. I have to be truthful. I have to be truthful. This platform where I sit, I let everybody know. I reject all divinity. I reject religion, spirituality. I reject these pan-African pro-blackness scholarship teachings. That's, I do that. So, so, yes, I have a bias against that type of mindset, those type of teachings. I don't care nothing. I'm not impressed by divinity and your greatness and all this feel-good rhetoric. I've been around this type of talk since I was a little boy, seven, eight, nine years old. I've been around. Oh, the blackness and the black power and all this stuff. That was in the late 60s. And I'm still hearing all oh, the greatness and the power and the, and the, we so divine and the, God going to do this. And I've been hearing this for years. And where are we at? Still sitting here with the Pecklewood. Still doing the same thing. I went from the church to the nation of Islam because I thought the nation of Islam was different. Join the nation of Islam under Farrakhan. And after a while, I'm like, only thing I do is sell bean pies and newspapers. When I joined the Nation of, of Islam, I was ready to, let's do this. I'm ready to die on mine. If Farrakhan had told me and us to go to the White House and take care of business, it's a done deal. We're ready to do this. Oh, no, we want you to go sit on the corner and sell some eggs so the people can make some more bean pies later or whatever. I wasn't ready for that kind. I thought the nation of Islam was about action. Now, however you want to do it, right now here in 2021, I have something called Operation Exodus Mississippi, a silver way, an intelligent way to actually create what you're talking about. We could do that. But I also, on the other hand, if y'all want to get busy, and show that we're nothing to play with, I don't mind laying down the line and die on the battlefield. I'm going to take a lot of them with me too. However you want to do it. But you really know I'm dealing with people who really don't want to do nothing except feel good. I want to talk about my greatness and and, uh, and all la 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 di da land and all, all this stuff. You really don't want to do nothing. You're actually comfortable in this place that you find yourself in. And I'm not about that. So let me let me just address some things here that you that you said. You was talking about a birthright. I don't know where you're getting this from. Mm -hmm. Your birthright. You have a birthright to some land. How? Nobody owns the earth. Nobody. In this reality that we live in for the last some thousand years. If you cannot defend, protect the little place that you call your birthright, your land, then you lose it to the stronger. There is no birthright. And chances are there was somebody who your people probably took it from. And as far as the earth is concerned, nobody owns the earth. You live and you die. You're not going to take none of this earth with you. Never. The Native American people was here. They could not defend this land. And it was taken from them. And do you know why Biden, do you know why the United States have all these nuclear weapons and all this stuff? Because they know another power could come in and take it from them. And a lot of the, the people that have been conquered in the past, a lot of them we don't even know. Because they was totally destroyed. Everything about them was totally destroyed. And we don't even know that they even existed. Who knows how many great civilizations and 
and tribes have existed, but they was conquered. It don't necessarily mean that you was conquered by a human being. Maybe there was a, a big earthquake, a big flood that wiped them out. We, we don't know. We don't have no birthright. You was born. Yeah, you have a right to use the land, but you don't have no right. Oh, this is mine. I own this. No, that ain't how things work. Because a power, you only own it as long as you can defend it. Once you can't defend it, you no longer own it. It's just like if I walk up to you and say, stick them up. I want your wallet. Once you give me your wallet, it's mine. Until you can find a way to get it back. It's mine. It's my wallet. It's in my possession. What they said, possession is one fifth of the law, some crap like that. It's mine until you bad enough to take it back. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're not bad enough to take it back, it's mine. It's going to be mine forever till you can get it back. It's mine. And as far as anybody else concerned, well, he's a, he, he got the wallet. How you know it's, it's, it's mine. It's in my possession. It's mine. My money. My ID. Everything is mine. My wallet. I took it because I used the gun. And you gave it to me because you were scared to get shot. I, you gave it to me because I'm superior because I got the weapon that, that you know that can take your life. So, this birthright thing, we got, we have, a, uh, we have a delusional idea, way of looking at the earth. Like we own the earth, we own, you don't own nothing. When you die, your body goes back into the earth, but you don't own nothing. You're, your ownership is only as long as power, as long as you have the power to defend this particular amount of, of, of ground. But I read your book. You might not like what I have to say. I read your book, and I even said it in the video. Matter of fact, I said in the video, I don't like to read. I don't read stuff no more. And I'll tell you the reason why I don't read things no more. First of all, the main reason yeah, was you started off I was incarcerated for 10 years and I had to read all those law books and all this different information to get myself out of incarceration. All that reading and writing I had to do, it burned me out. And not only did I do that for uh, myself, but I was helping other people too. So it was constantly writing different motions to the court, going to the law library and reading. And it, it burned me out because it, it took a lot of work. And it's frustrating when you're making these motions and following these different things in court and you get and the court said, you know, turn you down. And then I got to wait a whole nother year in order to try again. It's frustrating. So I got burned out. So actually, you really should feel, even though, because you don't understand. Really, it's an honor. It's, it's an honor and a privilege, really, for me to take the time, cause I don't, I don't, I have books. Like I told you, I've been around for a little while. I got books on, about Africa. I got books about uh, the, the islands. I got a book about, the, of course, the religious books. I got all kinds of books. I'm throwing all that stuff away. Throwing it all away, I'm giving it to the library. Don't mean nothing to me no more. Cause I read all these books. I got all this information. I've done all this research and I'm still sitting here living with pink races, living with a people who really don't want to do nothing. Just run their mouth and talk and, and get the wisdom and the understanding. And I'm divine in my melanin and all this other stuff. That didn't help me when I popped up. I knew about melanin. I knew about black divinity. I was raised in that for years. Didn't help me when I was locked up. None of it. It made me look more crazier. That's what it did. But I read your book. I read your book and I understand exactly where you're coming from. But I don't like black. Oh, he, he said it. he don't like, I know I don't, I don't like black. You know why I don't like black? Because it belonged to the peck of wood. That's where that word black come from. Black, colored, Africa, Negro, all that belongs to the peck of wood. He gave that to his dog that he made a pet out of. Black is a symbol of being dominated and conquered. 
There's a lot of African people. They don't like that word black either. They don't like African because they understand and they know that word comes from their enemy. I'm not black. And you said in your lecture, you say in the book, and you say in the book how that label has been used by Egyptians and other people in the past, the land of the black and things of this nature. Yeah. First of all, you don't, we really don't know. We take it from one language into another. We don't know what they really meant. But when you got racist, because you didn't do it, you didn't interpret those hieroglyphics or the language, you depending upon this peckerwood to put it into English, and he's a racist, so everything about him is black and white. Everything about him is red, yellow, black, and green, or whatever, because he's a racist. Why would Egyptians, why would people, why would people trip on, why would they trip on black when that's all they see every day? Why would they care about it? Every day they wake up when the, to the day they die, nothing but black folks. Why would they trip on the color black? The only one who would trip on the color black would be a racist. Somebody that want to show you that there's a difference between me and you. They, they wouldn't care nothing about that. They wouldn't care nothing about that at all. I'm more than skin color. I'm more can I address what you're saying right there? I'm gonna address what you're saying right there because well, I, I want black to, wasn't I always used you. as a racial can identification. I, it wasn't. I, it's not a racial identification. That's what I, I'm saying. It was. It was used as a racial identification can from I, can I, can I speak, people. Can I speak? You, to you what I that? Say, like I allowed you to talk. I allowed you to speak. Everything that heal, you want, brother. To speak. I, I want and you I, to heal. So I want you. I want you to say what you need to say because I want you to heal. No. And I took notes when you got done. And you can do the same for me. Allow me this, because you you throwing me off my, 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 my groove. I did not say anything. Because I wanted to say something as soon as you said I didn't read the book. I wanted to tell you, because I read the book. The whole 30 pages. I read the book. But I did not say anything. I read your book. Here's all my notes. Here's all my notes. Four pages of notes. I read the book. Four pages of notes. I read the book. That's why I know about Black Town. You said it's the 20th page, and I got 10 more to go. The book talks about Black divinity. And all. I know because I read the whole book. Now, did I read the book to your satisfaction? or understand it, I'm pretty sure not. Because I'm telling you from the very beginning, I'm biased against black. Because that's the that's the label of the Peckerwood gave them that, gave us that. I don't like it. It's the same thing. Now, why do you think black would help you become liberated or free that came from your oppressor that's the same that's the same logic as though nazism in some kind of way can help the jews deal with their problem nazism that mindset of nazism is what put the jew in the position that they was in then they're going to turn around and use that same philosophy the same thing that hurt them they said we can flip this around some kind of way and that's going to make us great that's gonna make us divide. That don't even make any sense. And these things, these things, black supremacy, supreme to be black, or for us, I'm concerned, you still want to be a slave. Oh no, he's he's, he's showing self hatred. What what is self what, hatred of self? According to who? What is this self? that I hate. When you call me black, yeah, I hate I hate that. When you call me African, yeah, I hate that. When you call me all this stuff that I know I'm not, yeah, I, I hate that. Don't try to label me. If you want to be a slave, so what's the sense of a black Muslim changing his name to Abdul Haziz? Tell me, I'm getting out the white man's name, but you still going to use the you still going to use the label black which come from him and all these other I, all these other 
things that come from your enemy. So what's the sense of changing your name, your name when you still when you still carrying the mindset and the concepts of your oppressor? And you're still carrying the, the labels of your oppressor, Africa, Africa, Af and on top, Africa is a continent. It's not a people. Who are you talking about? I hate myself. Who what self am I am I do I hate? I'm an African. Who? There are countless people on the African continent. Who do I hate? And why do I hate them? They ain't nobody on the continent done nothing to me. I'm just not them. Now you might want to be them. That's your business. We don't have no respect for each other. Because that's what you are. That's fine. Be who you are. I never told you don't be no African. That's your business. I just tell you how I feel. I don't get angry because you're African or you're a black supremacist or comedic. Or, I don't get angry at nobody over that. I don't get angry over that. They get angry over me because what I'm saying is makes sense. And you don't want to accept that. Because you caught up in racism, you still caught up in the this rhetoric that the oppressor put on you. And you're trying to make his crap free you, and it cannot. And that's why you're still not free. How long have we been screaming black power? You have not got you have not got it. No power. We got all these things for the last from 2010 to 2020. All this black power, all this wisdom, the pan Africanism and the comedics, all that. What if you put all these people put together? What have they accomplished? What have they done for the African people here? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing to speak of. I'm not saying that what people are not doing, it has no benefit. Matter of fact, most of it benefits those individuals first. You know, their personal family, because I got my children and my wife, we got to eat. It don't do nothing for me. I have not received, I have not, you haven't been done anything where it benefits me that I know of. So what kind of power are you talking about? When you talk about greatness, there's two kinds of greatness. One is vanity, because I want to be better than somebody. And then the other one is simply, hey, I'm just good at what I do. And that's all Muhammad Ali was saying. He's the greatest. I'm good at boxing. That's all. I'm a good boxer. I'm great at boxing. But we look at greatness. I just want to be better than others. I'm special. And you said it yourself in your talk. I'm special. I'm divine. I'm the greatest. I'm better than the Chinese. I'm better than those Africans. I'm better than the white man. I'm better. I'm the greatest. I'm special. Where are you getting this mindset from? You getting it due to our interaction with an oppressor who think the same way. White supremacy. I'm the greatest. I'm better. I'll kill you and take your accomplishments and I'll, I'll, get, I'll put that on my resume too. Same, same mindset, same mentality. I don't want nothing to do with that. There's nothing special about me. I just want to live my life. I don't want your religion. I don't want your divinity. I just want to be free. I don't want your spirituality. I just want to be free. Right or wrong, I just want to be, I want people to leave me the hell alone. I'm tired of somebody trying to tell me what to do, when to wake up, who to pray to. You might as well, you might as well be in prison because that's what they do to you in prison. Tell you when you need to get up. Tell you uh, uh, when to sleep all these different things, you might as well be in prison. It don't make any difference. The only thing I see is I'm leaving one slave plantation and I'm going to another. That's what it sounds like to me. I'm going from one place, one oppressor to another. What else did you say? And I never did say that that you were racist because contrary to popular belief, black people can't be racist. Oh, yes, they can. Well, then, if you're racist, that means because of your race, 
you can control the education, the media, the employment, and all those different things, the sciences and the education of other people. No, you can be biased and you can be prejudiced, but you can't be racist. You can't be racist. You don't have any power to, to do anything to nobody. In your mind, you can be. And on top of that, if you can be racist, it's still you're still basing everything on skin color. It's all on skin color. Now, you say that freedom or you simply said that the nature of the black man is this simply freedom. Freedom according to who? Really, there's no such thing as freedom. Because in order to be in, uh, in a civilized so-called society, you have to make rules and laws. Freedom is anarchy. True freedom is anarchy. Like if your car had freedom, then this tire will go that way and the other tire will go that way. That's real freedom. So you're not talking about freedom in that sense. I'm not talking about freedom. We talk about freedom where there is, you just do the best you can to give, to bring to your society some type of, some type of Order. It has to have order. Order that is fair to everybody. That's what I view of as freedom. It's simply order. And it is natural to be free. You want to be free to be able to do your own thing. You don't want to be under, especially as men, we don't want to be under the domination of another man. As men, you should want your own. You want your own nuclear power plants your own electrical systems, your own gas and light. You want to be able to grow your own food. You want to be able to go to your wife and children and they know that this is what we produce as men. We produce these things. And that should be number one priority. So I understand you say in your that you have the experience because you took over or took control of a neighborhood or something like that. And that's wonderful and that's nice. We we actually have been doing this all over the country. Uh, there's a Christian church that basically run a whole neighborhood in Philadelphia and things of this nature. And that's good. That's good as far as our getting on a, on a tricycle with training wheel. Because that's nothing like running an independent government. You responsible for the roads. You responsible for the trash. You responsible for all these different things that people have to deal with in life. And I have two more things real quick and I'm gonna let you hand the mic back over to you so that you can respond. Uh, and we was talking about your fasting and I did the longest I've ever fasted was five days straight. And I've never done it before in my life. I just said, I'm going to fast. Me and my sister, we just done it. Nothing but, nothing but water, really, and drank a little coffee and tea. So I know it can be done. I mean, you could do that. I, I choose not to do that. It's not, it's not, you know, I'm not spiritual or nothing like that. I'm not looking for divine guidance from nobody. When I did it, it was for purely for health reasons. Give your system a chance. Like I was following the teachings of Elijah Muhammad, give your system a chance to get rid of some of the poisons that have built up in your system, things of that nature, simply for health purposes. Sister Noble wanted me to ask you, Sister Noble wanted me to ask you, what is the woman's role in this new reality? And you said, 
she can just step up. What you know? What do you mean by step up? Because see, we have a problem here. <clears throat> the sisters don't get the sisters don't get any play. It's all about the men. All the prophets, you know, all this divinity, only reach out to men. Where the sisters at? The sisters don't have no role in divinity. Now, this divinity, the spirituality, shouldn't have a gender. Why is the focus? How come? Okay, so if that's the case, a sister, she can fast for eight, 800 days, and she should be able to get some kind of great divine message from the heavens, if that's the case. But the only thing we see around here is men. That's all I see. The spokespeople. The women, the males are always the one in front. Why is that? And that's not fair. That's not freedom either. That's unfair. Why is this divinity? Why is this spirituality? It seems to be bias and prejudice against her. Why is that? I don't. I'm, I'm, I don't want to be listening to men all the time. Now, see, some of these guys, they don't mind listening to men falling up behind men. Always a Marcus Garvey this, a Frederick Douglass this. Where, where the women at? You might as well go to a gay club. That's all. That's nothing but men there. Prophet Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad. It's all about the men. Malcolm X. And the list goes on and on. You very rarely you you talk about Harriet Tubman because somebody just made a move a movie about her not too long ago. Harriet Tubman. We leave all the sisters out in the struggle. But now look, I say this. And I'm gonna pass the mic. I'm reading the comment section, you know, the chat room. It's just really sad. You know, you got liars in the chat room. You got people in the chat room just, you know, telling lies and fantasy. Because they don't, they don't like the truth that I'm doing. I'm not into the fantasy stuff. Feel good, Reverend. I thought black power was supposed to be different than the church. But the reality is the church has done more for us than all this black power garbage put together. And that's a fact. That's the reality of it. Your black power, black supremacy, all this blackity black stuff, you ain't done nothing. Make a list, make a video, show all your accomplishments. I'll make a list and a video of everything Christians do. I have been treated in the Christian church way better than by anybody. I've never been called a nigger by somebody in the Christian church. I've never had my life threatened by people in the Christian church. Black power, I'm a coon, I'm a sambo, I'm a nigger, I'm all kinds of stuff. Then you turn around, I love my people, I love black people. And oh, wh where is all that? And then who you begging for money? You begging the Christians for money. Oh, brother and sister, and you know they're Christian, you begging them for money. A bunch of professional beggars. That's all these black and black folks do is beg for money. I'm trying to do this. Sell some red, white, and blue tennis shoes. For who? To benefit who? Yourself and your children. So I'm not impressed by you. And you know why you're not gonna be successful? Because you're basing everything that you are on something that puts you on a slave plantation. And you think black and all this other stuff is going to get you off the plantation. And how do you know so much? You just came off the slave plantation. We, we have been, we are more, we are more slave than we are Supposed to be free people. You only got about a hundred years of so-called freedom. And where you getting all this knowledge from? From the white man. 
Because that's the only teacher. Who taught you about Egypt and Africa? White man taught you that. You didn't find out about that. He taught you that. That's the foundation of everything that you know. Everything that you know of, that's the foundation. Because we wasn't allowed to read and write for hundreds of years. Then you come off the slave plantation. Who giving you your knowledge? You didn't get no Marcus Garvey. You didn't get no Noble Jewel Lee until the 20s and the 30s. Who's your teacher? Who's, who's putting on, who's putting, giving you all this knowledge? The oppressor. That's your foundation. You're nothing but a chocolate covered Pan African. You really are European. See, you don't want to hear that because you live in these fantasy worlds. You think that you're different. You want to talk about the coon and the sambos and things of this nature. You want to talk about people like that. You ain't no different. Don't think you, you are European. Don't think you done was put some chocolate over you. And you don't understand where I'm coming from because I'm keeping it real because I'm sick of all of it. I've been around that stuff, that black's power, divinity, spiritual stuff. That might impress you. It don't impress me. I've been there, done that. It didn't get me nowhere. And everybody that I see, it hasn't got them nowhere. You don't get angry at me because you're a bunch of losers. You're losers. That's the reality of it. So you need to stay away from me because I'm going to tell you the truth. You're a loser. Go and, go and, and deal with somebody who's going to tell you you are God and your melanin, you special. Go listen to those fairy tales and be the comfortable slave that you are. Talk about freedom, but you'll never be free. Never. I'm passing the mic to my brother. Nobody cares who you feel. No, they I, I don't you agree. Said a lot, Paul. You uh, let me let me unpack. Let me unpack what you said. Let me uh, let me unpack what you have just said, brother, because you have made a lot of statements, and I want to make a clear distinction between black power and black supremacy because you uh, you have made a distinction that you know by you know you've been treated this way by black power black power black power this and black power that there's a clear distinction between black power and black supremacy because when i first came in here i said i came in here i know you didn't read the book but i came in here in a place of healing because all the stuff that you're talking about is in the back of the book so you could just look in the back of the book and see it so I, I mean, but I, that, despite that, I came in here in a place of healing and healing you because I saw a hurt black man. So that's where I came from. That's the that's the reason why I wanted to have this discourse with you in the first place. It wasn't the fact that you did not read the book or anything like that. It wasn't about that because you would have known about the middle grounds and everything like that. You would have known about that. But that's despite the fact. And you're still coming from a place of hurt because these people from black power hurt you and all this other stuff and you never could be free and things of that nature. Well, black supremacy, we are free. There is no uh, there is no jurisdiction. I'm not under any pink power jurisdiction. We are free here. You know, we are we are free. Uh, I also want to say that when we were using the term black. When we were using the term black to talk about black people, that it was not a racial classification. It was a it was a status, just like white was a status. We used white and black as status symbols. That's why Asar was the perfect black, not because he had black skin, because he was a divine being. And he proved it. To, and he proved it. You say, what have I done differently? And you and I, I told you if you okay if you would have read to the back of the book and read the stuff that I had done, I have there's a list of things that I've done that nobody else has done. You know, uh, I didn't come into consciousness from saw Netter or reading some books or anything like that. I got into consciousness from a police chase. I got into consciousness because I my car sped out at 120 miles per hour. During a during a high speed police chase, and I saw Anubis in the back seat of my car. That's what woke me up. Not any books, not any Bobby Hemmett, not any anything like that. I became very uh, aware of our situation because I used to help people sell crack, 
and the women that got raped by police officers, they would get the, the all the police officers that were patrolling from in Colombia from two two a.m. in the morning to five a.m. in the morning. These women would come and tell me these stories about how they got raped by these police officers. That's how I came into consciousness. I didn't come into consciousness from reading and uh, from books and all the other stuff like that. I grew into that. So I am a testimony of doing something different. I am a testimony to that. I am a testimony to that. You can't say you know anybody that has fasted for 801 days. That's because I have came into the consciousness. That's because I had came into that being. You know, that's because of the, because of that supreme self and that knowledge that I am supreme, that I was able to go into that. You know, after Trayvon Martin was killed, I called on a nationwide hunger strike from my radio show, Too Raw for TV. You know, and I, I fast, I did, I did a symbolic hunger strike where I didn't eat any solid foods. And I, and, you know, first month, a lot of people were with me, you know, after the first month, you know, People dropped off. Every, everybody seemed to drop off. And the ancestor said, you're doing this just for you. And I continued on. I continued on with it. I continued on with it for 801 days until I realized that we are free. Black people are free. And it's our, And now it's just a, a choice of whether we want to fight or flight. And so there is a difference. There is a distinct difference between black power and black supremacy. You yourself even admitted that at, in your own admission. You know, you you talked about the, you know, the way you were treated by black power. You never were treated like that by black supremacy. Never were treated like that by black supremacy. And I said, I wanted to come in a place of healing because you came in here very, you know, like, you know, uh, talking about you weren't special and, you know, when everything is special, everything is special. You want to just live and die? I don't, I don't, that's not the sort of life I want my child just to live and die. Because if you just live and die, then you are just fueling someone else's fantasy. And then you talk about a fantasy, a fantasy world, a fantasy world. Well, you break down and talk about how you have a matriarch and there's a matriarchal society and where you know, our nature is balanced and things of that nature. My every, The writings that I have in the book, Three Steps to End Racism Right Now, is based on real life experiences. It's based on my, it's based on my uh, black town. It's based on my experiences in black town and doing that. Um, when I was in black town, the person that helped me run black town was a woman. So it's not about your gender. It's about your willingness and ability to do things. You know, so, you know, you ask where the women are, where the women are, the women are there. You know, in their natural state. In their natural state, they may not want to just step up and do things like that. You know, you you want them to do things as a man. So I, that's your, that's you, your man, per, uh, uh, that's your man perspective painting on these women that you want them to do these certain things. You want them to step up. They want them to, you want them to do this and you want them to do that just like a man. Why do you want a, why do you want a woman to act like a man? That's like some Tyler Perry stuff, you know, think like a man. Like that's on, that's that like, that's on, that's like some Steve Harvey stuff. You think like a man and all that stuff like that. Women are not supposed to be doing that. Women have different roles in their natural state. And they not, you know, and when and when you're free, when you're absolutely free, you see that and women see that. So it's not like, you know, where, you know, where are the women at? Where are the women at? You know, like they they're there, you know, and they're in their natural state and they're doing their thing. They not they don't have to they don't have to be in the forefront. They don't want to be in the forefront. They don't want to do that. And, that, you know, someone that wants to do that has been been tampered with by pink power terrorism. They are programmed by pink power terrorism and feminism to want to, to uh, you know, to act as a man and to step up and to be and to do all that thing. And I, that's not, that's not how we are supposed to be. So you saying that is you objectifying women and that's your male perspective of how a woman 
it's supposed to be, and why isn't the woman doing this, and why isn't the woman doing that? Why? Because they're in their natural state, they don't want to do that, for the most part. But like I said, when I was in Blacktown, the main person that helped me out was a woman. You know, she did a lot of stuff. She did a lot of things, and I, you know, I, and and she stepped up to the plate a lot. And it's about your willingness and ability. That's what it is about in black supremacy. It's not about your gender. It's not we don't we don't do the gender roles. We don't, we're not. It's not a gender thing. It's not about men domination or woman domination. It's about your willingness and ability to do things. Because I have a proficiency in writing. Because I did fast for eight hundred wedding days and had those visions. Because I you know I have a connection that a lot of people have seen me do supernatural things a lot of people have I, all my supernatural uh all my supernatural occurrences have had witnesses every last single one up to the police chase where i seen anubis where you can see it on youtube you know you can see the police chase on youtube where i saw my car spin out at 120 miles per hour and I, you know and I, and i didn't get injured or anything like that my car my car just made a a real smooth three point turn and then it, and nothing happened to it, and you know that all of that is all of that is verified and 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 on you know people seen that. So, you know, to say that you know women need to step up the plate, women need to do this, and women need, that's your male perspective on women. So you know to me that's your that's that's um you you are you are projecting you're projecting this image that you want to see women as, and that's not how women really are. You know, women are, women, that's not how they are in their natural state, you know? But I'm with any willing women that's willing to, willing, able to step up to, to power. It's about, it's collective. It's not about gender roles and all that stuff like that. And, you know, that's, that's, that's um, to me, that's, that's insanity. You know, it's not about gender roles. If you're willing to step up, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. You know what I'm saying? So you know, the, to me, you're just you're projecting a lot. You're project you're projecting your own vision of women. Um, you know, you you say you speak highly. Of, you have a, a a you know you you don't think that highly of women as you think you think. <laughs> you know, you think you think highly of women really really don't because then you will be willing to accept them in the roles that they naturally play. You know, and I'm willing to sell, uh, sell women in any role. If she wants to step up and rule and conquer with me, then let's step up and rule and conquer. You know, so, you know, you can have the Queen of Zingas. You have all of those people. You have, like you mentioned, the Harriet Tubman's. You have all those people. If a Harriet Tubman came up right now, let's ride. You know, I'm with it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with all that. I'm, so, to say that, you know, is gender... I, I'm basing things on gender and all this other stuff. That's that's not that's that's absolutely not true. Women women just have women just act naturally different than men. You know, women just act, act naturally different than men. You don't they not they not just naturally doing this the thing you want them to do naturally. You know, and I don't know why you want women to do all these things. You talk about the fantasy land when I, all my stuff based on reality, but then you and then in your review. You painted this picture of this matriarchy, which you never lived through a matriarchy, or a patriarchy, I should say. You never lived through a matriarchy, or a true patriarchy, but you painted this picture of this matriarchy where people are, where the balance of the earth is balanced, and people's energy, you know, people are, um, people come back into their natural selves, and people in the, in the, in the, in the, um, environment becomes better again and all this other stuff and that's and that's a that's a fantasy land to me that that was fantasy that was more fantasy than anything i read in my book because all the stuff i was saying in my book was true that stuff that you saying that about the matrix which you never lived through you never been through a matriarchy because you never there's not there's never been a queen or a king ruling over you you know what i'm saying there's never been a queen or a king you we live we live in a very we live in a really in uh, an anarchist state that is with um, it is just false uniformity. We live in a fake uh, uh, of 
you know, it, it's very deceptive what this is. You know what I'm saying? They put they put they put different people in different positions of power. You know, the closest thing to a matriarchy is the black community because they give because in job positions they give job uh, women more better job positions. But that's not a true matriarchy. That's not a true matriarchy. So you can't say you live in, you have ever been through a matriarchy or a patriarchy and fa and paint the fantasy world of a patriarch of a matriarchy where the earth is balanced again, the water's clean, and the birds are chirping, all this other stuff. That's, that's fake. That's fake. That's a fake reality. You know what I'm saying? But what I say is real. And I talk about the middle grounds. You never have mentioned the middle grounds. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I, I made the point. I proved the point that you didn't truly read the book. And if you don't want to admit to it, that's okay. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, I, you know, all my if you want to talk about what I do differently is all in the back. Have you ever have you ever uh unified all the gangs from this in the southeast? You know, I I led Blacktown. I fasted for 800 to one day. I mean, these are just some of my you know, there's not even this is just that's just the tip of the iceberg of the kind of stuff that I've been doing all my life. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, I am special. Cause I know that people can there's not not everybody could do it. even yourself you're self admitted that you couldn't do it. So how am I not special? How can I why would I say, Oh, I'm not special? I just I just fasted for eight hundred and one days. Not even Jesus did that. Not even Jesus did that. Jesus couldn't do that. You tell Jesus you tell Jesus not to eat eight hundred ways eight hundred one days, he'll say, Shit. <laughs> not me. Jesus couldn't do it. So you're telling me I, I'm not to not to step up into my spe um divinity and not to step and not to acknowledge how special that I am? I'm not gonna do that. I'm I am i i know how special I am. You know what I'm saying? I know my I know that I have a divine role in this. So that you know, to I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I'm a regular person. You know, because I I have had visions that have helped people. I have helped people. I have I have um, helped communities. I have helped families, and I'm helping you right now to heal. I'm helping you right now, brother, by even being here, by even reading this book that helped you. Or halfway in it, you know. So to so to say to to say to for me to deny that, that, and then you talk about how you much you love Malcolm, but then Malcolm said we are supreme, and you had nothing to say about that. You have nothing to say about that. So I mean, it, you know, I, we black wasn't a racial identification when we used letters. So that's why we use that's so. To me, when you say black and we use some sort of racial identity, no, that's how that's what pink people did. They used it as a racial identity because there was no race until they created it. Okay. And then black supremacy. You said that black supremacy was just the answer to white supremacy. It wouldn't exist without white supremacy. And that's not true because we always have worldwide rulership of things. And, um, you know, and it, it was the Moors, Moors and all that stuff like that. It, was, it may not have been called black supremacy, but Christianity always called Christianity. It was called Gnosticism. It was called Marxism. It was called a lot of different things before it was now is known as Christianity. You know what I'm saying? So black supremacy has gone through many forms and now has taken its most as black supremacy. But black supremacy has gone through many forms. And then, oh, and then another thing I wanted to address, because you talked about hemp, and I was talking about how us, utilizing hemp for a means of exchange and you took that to mean that i'm smoking weed and all that stuff like that and i thought that was very derogatory because i don't smoke weed i don't drink but then you want to talk about oh well he just wanted to you just came out he wanted to do some hemp so he could smoke weed that's not i mean that to me that was to me that was racist because that was you using a black 
stereotype against a black person. To me, that was that was the most racist thing that was on there. Is you talking about smoke weed and all this other stuff? I don't smoke weed. You know what I'm saying? Pimp, um, hemp was what the um what the Constitution was written on. They make clothes out of hemp. They can make concrete out of hemp. It's just common. It's just it's just it doesn't take a um rocket scientist. Hemp and what hemp can do. Using hemp because of control of that industry. Black people used to be in control of the black people used to be hemp industry. So that's why they started making paper with trees, started using uh utilizing different things for, for clothing and things of that nature. Because black people used to control the hemp industry. That's why it was that was why it was made illegal in the first place. So to say that I want hemp because I want to smoke weed and drink, I don't, I don't know where you came with the alcohol with. I thought that was very racist of you. You know, I thought that was very racist. But like I said, I'm not here to call you on you on you on your racism, or on here to call you on your um, you heal. You know, so that's why I came in here. I, that's why I came and I wanted to speak to you so um, quickly for it because I wanted to help you heal. Past, like you said, the, the the scars of black power and the scars of these different people that that you know they made threats on your life. No black supremacist has ever done that. So you got to make a clear distinction between what black supremacy is and black power. Because I came here in the spirit of helping you heal, even though you know you you have you know I don't care what you say about the book. You know I don't care what you say about it. It only matters that you read it. It only matters that you read it because once those ideas are in your mind. That's the only thing that matters because, see, you can't defeat an enemy if you don't win up here first. So you got to conquer the mind first. So that's the only thing that concerns me is that you that, you know, you you know that people read the book. I don't care if they agree or disagree or whatever. I don't care about that because it's all it's, uh, enough people are going to look at that and, and make a change and make a difference. I've already made world changes. You know, I've already made world changes. Obama and Trump know me. That's that's facts and that's verified. You know, so I I have made world changes. You know, hashtag FYF nine eleven. I made I have already made world changes. So I'm concerned about what you think about the book. I'm concerned about your healing. That's what I that's why I came here initially. But you know, you were painting a false picture what I did say in the book. So, you know, that's that's why I came in here. But to live and die, you can just live and die. Why don't you just you that's that's slave that's a slave mentality. Slave die. You, we're we're doing something different. We're here we're to do something different. We're here to create something. We if we if we weren't here we might as well be just animals. We might as well just be in the field with with the with the uh pigs and the you know what I'm saying the cattle and all that stuff like that. We might as well do that if we're not here to make a difference. If we're not here to do something different. Hmm? Okay. Um so I know I know uh, Courtney said you want to say something thank you and we would love to follow up again um, on your platform uh, we do have uh, to jump to another uh, another teleconferencing session uh, like I said that this work is in high demand but I thank you so much uh, everyone in the room is so engaged I could tell you all want to keep going but uh, for the sake of letting uh we have to continue on with the day and we have another teleconferencing session we're going to have to wrap this up but um we do want to play this on our way out well can i say something first Absolutely. Bru brother I, i'm saying this you know i don't care if you read the book really honestly yeah, you know it is is a plus if you did but i'm i'm coming from a place of love i love you as a brother you know what i'm saying doesn't matter i don't care what you got to say about me honestly you know what I'm saying? Because I know that, you know, that, you know, we, that our, 
what we stand on is more than what we what we're against. You know, we're we're for the same thing. We are, Absolutely. We are, we are going we are for the same thing. So it doesn't even matter what you think of this book. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what you think of this book. I you know, but I did want to come from a place I, I wanted to heal you and that's what I that's why I came in here. That's what I first said. And that's what well, I, 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 I wanna say I think that's that arrogant of you I think it's arrogant of you to say that you're trying to heal me like you're some kind of doctor. You can't, you can't heal me. You know, I, you, you are, you talk about somebody insulting somebody. That's an insult to me. How are you healing? How are you gonna heal me? You some kind of doctor? Which what do you mean heal me? I'm insulted. I'm insulted when you tell me something like that. I'm, I'm insulted when you keep telling me I didn't read your book. I did read your book. There's no need reason for me to lie. I'm telling you where I disagree, where I, I might need some clarification. I read the book. Don't call me a liar. I read your book. And you can't heal me. You're not a doctor. You're not the almighty or something like that. This is, this is the stuff that I'm sick and tired of in this blacky black stuff because that would, it gives you an arrogant sense of being. And you're not all that. You don't impress the Pecklewood, but you think that you want to you gonna go to another slaves on the plantation, and you think that you can impress them yeah. with your knowledge and very, you fast, you got all these revelations and things of, of, of that nature. That's what I'm I'm tired of messing with. That we so special, right, yeah. but don't have a pot to piss in. Don't have nothing. <laughs> you don't have nothing. Where are you getting your food to give away? Directly, indirectly, it's coming from the pecklewood. You have nothing. You grow nothing. You have no electricity, you have no YouTube, and the brothers and sisters that have alternate versions of Facebook and YouTube, we don't even support he them. Does. He actually does grow. I, 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 it's 40 million of us. Can you feed us with your little garden? Okay. Um, we are, I, I come from a place of healing, brother. I don't, I, you know, all that stuff you, all that stuff you saying, <laughs> all that stuff you saying, I mean, I, I come from a place I'm trying to heal, healing, you know what I'm saying? An arrogant and, uh, place. Think, you think about in order to heal, that means you must to say, you telling me I'm sick for some reason. But there ain't nothing wrong with you. you See, are. that's the insult. you telling me that I'm sick. Not. Why am I sick? <laughs> that's an insult to me. You can't heal me. You're not no doctor. You need, uh, you may, you may, you need to hear it. You need, you need. No, I don't need, I don't need to hear it. You need to I don't need to hear it like that. You need the healing. I don't need your healing. I didn't ask for a doctor's appointment. That's an insult to me. You telling me I'm sick. Did I ever, did I tell you that you were sick? Well, you no, know. I did not. Did I tell you that I need to come to you and give you some kind of new information, something that's going to heal you and make you better? I didn't come to you that way, but you're going to come to me. I'm sick. I need some kind of healing. Yeah, you you did you did sign, you did say I smoke weed and drink though, even though you no, I did not. Know. I was speaking in general. I did not say you smoke any weed. I was speaking in general because Negroes do do that, and they have all these excuses why they you why they smoke and they drink. I did not talk. To, I did not say your name and said and and say that you smoke and drink. I don't know what you do. I don't know you don't like that, know. and you don't know me like that. And when it comes to the sisters stepping up, only thing I'm saying is, if the sisters want to do that, let them do it. Why are we hindering? We men are hindering, purposely hindering women from doing certain things. If the sisters want to try, Black if they get a revelation, put them out there. And you can have, absolutely, and you can have a utopia. There's a that was watching on TV. There's a tribe, and you don't even know who the. Who the, who the kings and the queens are. You go to the tribe, everybody got the same kind of hut. When they go out and get the food, everybody eat the same stuff. You don't even know. Bees do it. You don't see bees arguing. I'm, the queen bee don't run around talking about, I'm better than some, well, they call her the queen bee. She just, she just know her role. She lay the egg. And everybody need each other. How come we can't do the same thing? How come we can't do that? But I know that we are, we out of time. And, uh, I thank you and, and sister, sister Courtney, and even even my critics in the chat room. It's it's funny. Uh, it, it's all it's all great. It's all good. 
I just can't do it no more. I'm a realist. I have to accept reality. I'm not into these different things. When when we when we actually accomplish something, then I would give us the credit. I'm not gonna call you a god and a goddess and all these different things, and we divine and and and, and, and one and you did not earn it. Read the last page. Read, read the last page. You know, you have to earn it first. And you can't earn it. You cannot earn it while you're still living under the jurisdiction and the domination of your enemy. Get out. Get liberated. That's the first step. Get liberated. All this talk that you're doing and you're still depending on this duck of wood and under his domination, all oh, that don't mean nothing. But you, you are always welcome on my platform. And like you say, you. I don't have a problem with your um, brother. You, you want to chat? Yeah. Thank you. So you're welcome to always come. And I hope Thank that I'm, you. I'm welcome and to come back here. You can. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we, we glow up. We, we elevate the conversation. Absolutely. Uh, if yes, anyone would like to reach out to either one of these, uh, guests, please see their contact information in the chat stream. We are closing out. If anyone wants to contact me, y'all know what to do. I'm Bruce Blow up at gmail.com. We're live Beautiful. from Two Proper TV, Printing Press and Studios. Please join back for our next elevated conversation. Y'all know tonight, uh, actually, Palmetto Star. You can call him Prophet Robet. He is going live on his Instagram with a thrilling uh, conversation regarding the newfound information on the assassination, the murder of our dear beloved brother, Prince Malcolm X. Please make sure you tune in tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. The links are through his IG. Uh, you can find the information there as well as the call in option. I'll be on tonight, he'll be on. It'll be a great time to really continue because, as you said, brother, the, the work does not stop, it's in doing, it's in the doing. The discussion is part of it, though, but it's in the doing. So, next time on the do one drop your exchange uh, as far as. Conversation. In, in the comment section so we can continue to build beyond the board and again y'all know what to do until next time make sure y'all glow up but we're going to close out today with the words of our brother uh, again our shiny prince brother Malcolm X I also would like everyone to know that we are on the eve of the day that Trayvon Martin was murdered mm -hmm. and taken from us tomorrow marks uh, first of all, last last week he would have turned. You know, it's amazing how time flies. The brother would have been 26 years old. Last week marked his birthday, and tomorrow marks the day that George Zimmerman murdered this boy, and he is still George Zimmerman is still walking amongst us. So let's 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 get let's get unified as a. Uh, Brother Huey said, there's only one way to truly fight racism, and that's in the unity of us. Black so, supremacy. And it's black supremacy. And until next time, let's leave with this Malcolm quote. Please exchange information. Please, everyone, love someone. Let's unify. Let's elevate the conversation by any means necessary. <laughs> The race that you belong to, so much so that you don't want to be around each other. You know, before you come asking Mr. Muhammad to lead the king, you should ask who yourself who taught you to hate being what God gave you. <laughs>